olfaction, the sense of smell, what it is that you are going to write in your exams if this question is asked. To know that, watch this video till the end, all your doubts will be cleared. So let's start, let's start olfaction. So what are we going to learn in this video? In this video, we will concentrate on three important concepts in olfaction. The first one is called as the olfactory receptor. Second is the olfactory bulb. And at last, we will see the olfactory pathway. So let's understand as to where is this olfactory receptor present. Remember that this olfactory receptor is present in a membrane, which is called as the olfactory membrane. And where is this olfactory membrane present? This olfactory membrane is present in the roof of the nose. So what diagram you are seeing on the slide here is the diagram of the olfactory membrane and where is the olfactory receptor. Remember that olfactory receptor is also called as an olfactory cell. So this cell what you are seeing here, this is what is called as the olfactory receptor or this is also called as the olfactory cell. What is this cell? This cell is nothing but it's a bipolar neuron. Remember it's a bipolar neuron. So if it's a bipolar neuron, on one side it is having a dendrite. Okay, this is the dendrite end and on another side of it is having an axon. Okay, on from one side axon is coming and on another side the dendrite is coming. So the side on which the dendrite is there, we also have here what is called as mucosa. Okay, and what is happening to this dendrite? This dendrite is showing an expanded end. This expanded end of the dendrite is what is called as olfactory knob. Okay, or it is also called as the olfactory rod. Extending from these olfactory rods or these olfactory knobs are these minute ciliated structures. Okay, these ciliated structures are the one which are called as olfactory hair or they are also called as olfactory cilia, olfactory cilia or olfactory hair. And remember that these cilia, they are embedded in this mucus. So it's the mucus in which the odorant is going to enter and it is going to dissolve in that mucus then this dissolved odorant molecules are going to go and attach to this olfactory hair or also called as the olfactory cilia. This is how this olfactory receptor is going to get activated. Then I told you the other end of this bipolar neuron is having the axon. So where is this axon going to go? This axon is going to pierce this bone. What is this bone called as? This is no nothing but your cribriform plate of the ethmoidal bone. It is the cribriform plate of the ethmoidal bone. And this axon is going to terminate in one more structure above the cribriform plate of the ethmoidal bone, which is called as the olfactory bulb. Now, apart from the olfactory receptors, there are few other cells which are present in this olfactory membrane. One is this, this cell, which is which are present adjacent to these olfactory receptors. These are the one which are called as supporting cells. They are called as the supporting cells or they are also called as sustentacular cell. And then you are seeing even these cells. These are the one which are called as the basal cells. And here you are seeing this gland like structure. This is what is called as Bowman's gland. And what's the function of this Bowman's gland? This Bowman's gland is going to secrete the mucus. Fine. Right? This is the structure of the olfactory membrane. Very important here is this olfactory receptor or also called as the olfactory cells. Dendrite is there and the dendrite is expanded and that is forming the olfactory knob or the olfactory uh, rod from this olfactory knob or the rod is coming so many cilia or the olfactory hair which are embedded in the mucus. Now, next let's understand as to how is this olfactory receptor activated. So, this is what is called as the olfactory receptor as I have already explained to you. These are the olfactory hair or the olfactory cilia. Now, the ends of this olfactory hair or the cilia are having receptor and what is that receptor called as? That is called as G protein coupled receptor. That's called as a G protein coupled receptor. I already made a video on how this G protein coupled receptor is going to get activated. Please have a look at that video if you want to understand it in more detail. So, what is this G protein coupled receptor? This G protein coupled receptor is present in the cell membrane. This is the cell membrane and it is having an extracellular domain and it is also having an intracellular domain clear the extracellular domain is the one which is going to attach to the odorant and the intracellular domain is the one which is attached to this g protein now what is this g protein this g protein is nothing but it's a trimeric protein consisting of three subunits the alpha subunit the beta subunit and the gamma subunit Okay. So now once the odorant comes and attaches to this extracellular domain of the G protein, what is going to happen is the alpha subunit is going to dissociate from the beta and the gamma subunit and it is going to go and cause the activation of this enzyme which is also present in the cell membrane. What is that enzyme here? It is called as adenyl cyclase. So once adenyl cyclase is activated, this adenyl cyclase is going to convert the ATP into the cyclic AMP. Now this cyclic AMP is called as a second messenger and that is going to cause activation of the sodium channels 
और ओपनिंग ऑफ द सोडियम चैनल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द सेल मेम्ब्रेन एक बार सोडियम चैनल्स ओपन हो गया तो क्या होने वाला है सोडियम फ्रॉम द एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर साइड इज गोइंग टू एंटर इन साइड सो एक बार सोडियम इज गोइंग टू गो इन साइड वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन सेम थिंग द डीपोलराइजेशन एंड हेंस देर इज गोइंग टू बी एक्टिवेशन ऑफ द सेल सो दिस इज how the olfactory receptor is going to get activated so what's the method of activation the method of activation is via the activation of g protein couple receptor so we have now learned the olfactory receptor and we have also learned how the olfactory receptor is going to get activated now where did i tell you the axons of the olfactory receptors are going to go and terminate they are going to go above the cribriform plate of the ethmoidal bone and they are going to terminate in a structure which is called as the olfactory bulb now this information now this olfactory receptor which has got activated that has to go to the olfactory bulb now let's say let's see what is going to happen in the olfactory bulb so these are our receptors these are our odorants which are going to activate our receptors and these are the axons these are the axons which are going to pierce the cribriform plate and enter into this structure what you are seeing here that is called as the olfactory bulb so in the olfactory bulb we have two important cells which are further going to convey the information to the olfactory cortex one is called as m this cell what you are saying that is called as the mitral cell and t what we have labeled that is what is called as the tuft cell mitral cell and the tuft cell so the axons of these bipolar neurons are also called as the olfactory receptors they are going to synapse with the dendrites these are the dendrites of the mitral cell and the tuft cell the area where this synapse is taking place between the axons of the olfactory receptors and the dendrites of the mitral and the tuft cell this area is what is called as olfactory glomeruli that is called as the olfactory glomeruli now the axons of these mitral cells okay these are the, this is the axon of the mitral cell and the tuft cell that is going to convey the information to the olfactory cortex that means here the olfactory receptor is a first order neuron and the mitral and the tuft cells are acting like the second order neuron because they are going further and conveying the information to the olfactory cortex and this place where the synapse between the axons of the olfactory receptors and the dendrites of the mitral and the tuft cells is going to take place that is what is called as the olfactory glomerulus or glomeruli now there are two more cells apart from the mitral cell and the tuft cell wo kon se hai one is called as this what is this this is called as the periglomerular cell what it is called periglomerular cell okay what is the function of this periglomerular cell this periglomerular cell is going to form connection between the two adjacent glomerulus and it is going to have synaptic connections again with the dendrites of both the mitral cells as well as the dendrites of the tuft cell there is one more cell here you are seeing this cell okay this one this is what is called as granule cell what is that called granule cell what does the granule cell do granule cell is going to have connection with these 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 what are these called these are called as the lateral dendrites again of both the mitral cells as well as the tuft cells just remember only one point regarding both these cells both the granule cells as well as the periglomerular cells they are going to cause something which is called as lateral inhibition if you write this much in the exam that's more than enough the periglomerular cell and the granule cell what is their function they cause what is called as the lateral inhibition so now the axons of the mitral cells and the tuft cells they are going to convey the information to the olfactory cortex let's see what is going to happen so let's just summarize the entire thing in the form of the olfactory pathway so now what is there we have the olfactory receptor olfactory receptor is the first order neuron and where it is present it is present in the olfactory membrane which is present in the roof of the nose so now the olfactory receptor gets stimulated via the g protein coupled receptor and the axons of the olfactory receptor are going to synapse with the dendrites of the mitral cell as well as the tuft cell where mitral and tuft cells are present they are present in the olfactory bulb these are considered as the second order neurons now the axons arising from the mitral cells and the tuft cells they are going to go to the cortex and they are going to form what is called as olfactory tract they are going to form what is called as olfactory tract now this olfactory tract is broadly going to divide into two parts one is called as medial olfactory striae and another one is called as the lateral olfactory striae the fibers which form the medial olfactory striae they are going to terminate in amygdala as well as the basal forebrain these are parts of the limbic system whereas the fibers which are forming the lateral olfactory striae they are going to terminate in the primary olfactory cortex including what is called as prepyriform cortex 
this is the all factory pathway and the all faction which is required for you guys if you have understood this video and if at all the video is helpful for you don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and share this among your friends thanks a lot for watching